Hello, and welcome to another episode of Simply Fresh Food with Chef Renee. I'm Chef Renee, and boy, do I have a menu planned for you today. Yum! We're going to be making filet mignon with balsamic, uh, balsamic glaze. It's actually going to be a pork sauce to go with it. Then we're going to crumble some blue cheese on top. We're also going to make a curry, spinach, and tomato dish. And then to top it off, you can't have steak without potatoes, right? So we're gonna be making a chipotle buttermilk uh, mashed potatoes to go with it. Let's get started. Now, today I have some that were already sliced um, and we're gonna use those today. All right, so I have two here, and what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead, because this steak is already tender, it's, it, which is why it's called a tenderloin, um, and that is because it's actually located on the inside of, if you were the cow or the, the heifer, if you would, it's located inside and it's protected. It's not a worked muscle, so it actually, it melts in your mouth as compared to other steak cuts. And it's very, it's just delicious and it's very quick and easy to cook. Now, you can overcook them, but we're gonna be careful here today because they are also expensive. I actually have what they call a um, steak seasoning here. Uh, and I know I normally use, make my own seasoning, but today I'm gonna use this steak seasoning because I found it to be really good. Um, and it's a Montreal steak seasoning. So I'm just going to sprinkle this over the steak. And like I say, because these cuts are just really good anyways, we don't really need to over season them or overwork it. I'm going to turn it over. I'm really going to let me wash my hands a little bit there. I like to cut my filet mignon myself because I actually get the perfect cut in the number of ounces I, I want in the steak. I'm guessing this is probably like a two uh, ounce steak, which having the both of them, you know, you got four ounces, that's enough. All right, now, I have there the steaks. This is a different oil that I'm gonna put on it. And I actually left the garlic in there. This is garlic infused oil. I'm only gonna use just a little bit because remember, we have the oil in the pan, but this is also gonna give it a different flavor. And you know, I love flavor. So I'm gonna work that into them on both sides. I think my pan is hot enough. In fact, I'm going to check on it. We don't want it too hot, because we don't want it to cook the outside so much that it doesn't have a chance, um, the inside doesn't have a chance. So I'm gonna lower the heat yeah, and look, that is smoking, indicating it is ready, ready to receive the steak. All right, so we're just going to put that in. You hear that nice sizzle? That's exactly what you want. I had a little piece come off there, but I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to cook it. All right, and these are nice sizes. So I want it to get a nice crisp sizzle, or a nice crisp coating on it. Now what I've done, because we needed the time, is I actually started the potatoes. And what you want to do is, I'm going to, demo uh, the potato cut while I'm keeping my eye on the filet mignon. Like I said, these are expensive cuts and you don't want to overcook them. So um, while that's getting a nice crispy coating on the outside, you just need maybe about maybe six or seven minutes on both sides. And then I'm just gonna pull it off and let it sit. I'm gonna cover it and let it just sit for a while so that it could finish cooking uh, on its own and keeping the juices in there. But I have some potatoes in here already. Yep, I have some potatoes in there. And what I've done is I've cut the potatoes 
small. I did more than a quarter cut. So just drop the knife down on them one more time because the smaller they are, the faster they'll cook. And then I actually strain the potatoes and I put them back into the pot because I wanted them to dry out for what I'm going to do with them. Um, I didn't want all that moisture in there because I'm gonna add some moisture, so I didn't want them to be too watered. But let me, let me take a look and flip these over. Oh, they're looking beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. I think I'm gonna flip. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And there we are. Not to be outdone with the little one there. That is absolutely beautiful. Right what we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna peel this potato. And a lot of people take their paring knives and that's okay too. If you take a knife and you decide to cut it, just be very careful. Because, and you don't wanna lose a lot of the potato. I actually like to use a peeler because it's quicker. Yep, and I love fast. And then if there are little spots or things that I need to go and clean up, that's exactly what I do. Now, I'm not gonna use this potato because you can see I've already got them done. I just wanted to show you that and how I cut it. Yep, after I peel it all, then I just cut it down the middle, cut it down the middle, and then I cut it again. Uh, and we have the potatoes there. And again, it is always important that you keep your work area clean so that you don't uh, contaminate the foods. And since we just work with the protein of steak, I'm going to actually switch and get a new clean cutting board. And this is what we'll work on with the potatoes. Now I have the lid off. The steaks are looking really, really good. Um, and we're going to finish them in the oven. Uh, in just a few moments. All right, so I'm going to take the potatoes and I'm, I'm going to move them over here just so that I can work with them. Now, they're already soft and ready to go. So I'm going to get my masher and I'm going to just start mashing and mashing and mashing. And you know what? I'll tell you something while I'm doing this. It's going to take a few minutes. If you want to get crispy french fries, there's something that we do uh, in restaurants, and that is that we actually blanch the potatoes. So once we get them cut just the way we want them cut, then we take it and we drop them in the hot oil. And that's gonna be actually our first cooking. We don't cook them all the way, just a few moments, so you're not looking for them to turn brown. And then we take them out of the oil and we sit them on the side, you know, so that they can uh, air out and cool. And then that way when we're ready to serve the potatoes, we just have to go ahead and fry them. Not only did we cut down on the time, but we also cut down on, um, or we made them crispier which is fabulous. So this is coming out perfect. I see here that our steaks are ready. I'm actually gonna move them to a plate with another steak that I prepared earlier. Let me put this on the table. All right. This is a beautiful, beautiful, look at that. Just absolutely gorgeous. All right, and we're gonna actually finish these in the oven. I'm going to put that down. Now, what I wanna do while my pan is still hot, and we're gonna get back to the potato, but while my pan is still hot, I'm actually gonna add to it. I'm gonna add to it uh, some shallots because I'm gonna deglaze and get up the drippings that were left in the pan. I'm also going to add I have dried cherries, but you can use dried cranberries. Dried cranberries are actually sweeter than these cherries. So because I want that nice sweetie or sweet taste, I'm gonna actually add a little bit of brown sugar uh, to it. And 
it's going to be a port sauce that we're going to use. Now, port is slightly sweeter anyway than, uh, than another red wine. But if you don't have port at home, you can actually use um, a Cabernet Sauvignon or another sweet red wine. So I'm just going to add a little oil to this to help it, just to help saute those a little bit before we deglaze the pan. All right, so let's move those around. I'm not trying to fry them, just want to make them a little bit translucent. And what I've used is um, the shallots are in the onion family, and I put that in here. It smells good, just these alone. I actually like them a lot. All right, so I'm going to put that down. And what we're going to add to there, let me move the potatoes just for a moment. We're actually going to add our broth. Now what I have here is beef broth, and that's because we're working with beef. So we're going to put the beef broth in there, and I'm going to add the port. Now, this studio is going to fill with this wonderful, wonderful aroma. Um, so I better keep an eye out to see if they come knocking on the door. It already smells just delicious. What you want to do is let this cook for about three minutes because we want this to reduce so that it'll get a little thicker. Then we'll add the rest of the ingredients there. I just want to make sure my burner's at the right temperature and it is, so we're going to let that cook down. And meanwhile, we'll finish the potatoes. Now, what I'm going to add to the potatoes, and I'm just looking in here just to make sure. I like my potatoes to still have some consistency, some chunk to it. If you want, mash them more. If you want, turn, put them back on the burner. Um, but I like mine chunky, so that's going to be perfect for me. So now what I'm going to add to this is I have some green chilies. You can also use chipotle uh, peppers if you like in adobe sauce. But I'm going to add the peppers to it. And who can have potatoes without sour cream? Not me. So I'm going to add the sour cream right here up front and early. Now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put them back on the burner to get a little warm, warmer. And I'm looking at the sauce, and it's cooking down nicely. This is exactly what we want. All right, so we have this going. Let's see. All right, and to the potatoes, I'm actually going to pour in the milk. And this is about a cup of milk. And uh, it is whole milk mixed with buttermilk. You could use skim milk if you'd like. You could use all whole milk. You could use whatever type you'd like. I like a little buttermilk, and I like, um, and I like uh, the peppers in it. So we have the peppers, and we have that. Now, of course, we're going to flavor it. Let me stir that just to make sure nothing's sticking, and it isn't. Oh, that smells so good. Can't decide if it's this or if it's that. This being my potatoes. Yum. All right, that's cooking down nicely, the port sauce for the steaks. And let's see. I think I'm going to go ahead and drizzle, sprinkle a little salt in the potatoes, and that's just to your taste and your liking. And of course, we know that I love my fresh ground pepper. And again, this is to your taste as well. Mmm, it is smelling just delicious here. All right, I'm gonna pull that off just so we can test it. Oh, perfect, perfect. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to check on the port sauce. And it looks like it's cooked down quite a bit. 
Mmm, it smells just wonderful, wonderful. All right, so to finish this port sauce off, what we're going to do is we're going to add a tablespoon of both the balsamic vinegar and a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. I'm also going to add a little mustard and a little brown sugar. Let's do the brown sugar first. Remember, I'm adding back that sweetness because I don't, um, didn't use the dried cranberries, but you certainly can if you'd like. And it's just a pinch. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pour in the Worcestershire. And I'm going to pour in the balsamic. We're going to add just a bit of mustard. Not a lot. And this is Dijon. Um, mustard because it just has such a nice flavor to it. So we're going to add that. All right. And I'm actually just going to stir. I'm not really looking like to, to cook this off because I love all of the uh, aromas, all of the flavors that have combined. Just going to have it going for a little bit. Oh man, that smells so delicious, so delicious. That's gonna be great on top of those steaks. So let's clear off some of this. Let's check on our potatoes, which seem to be just going fine. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna taste a little bit, just to be sure. Mmm, very good, very good. And the peppers, the green peppers, give it such a nice flavor boost. You're going to get flavor in every bite of everything. I'm, I just, I love it. And I'm sure you're going to love it too. All right. So now that we're done there, I'm actually going to take that off. Let's be sure we got everything out of the way. We're going to take this off. Oh yes, that's very good. We're going to make our spinach. We're just going to sit it there for a few moments. We're actually going to now finish the dish with our spinach and tomatoes. And we're going to add curry to that, and it's going to be just fabulous. All right, now that we have our area clean again, let's move that as well. All right, so I have here about 12 ounces of spinach. I'm using baby spinach. You, you can use um, uh, the other spinach. Uh, however, what you want to do is you want to end up taking those stems off because they'll stick out and be all over the place and they're kind of bitter, but still edible and delicious and I love them. I have this spinach here we're going to use and we're also gonna use onions. This is half an onion. We're also gonna use garlic. We're going to use the curry powder and we're gonna use our cherry tomatoes. All right, first we're gonna start, well, I have to have a pan, don't I? Let's see, there we are. And I'm actually gonna cover up the potatoes because they're perfect. Absolutely just delicious. And I'm actually going to put in, we're gonna have a double dose of garlic, okay? I love garlic. So we're gonna use the garlic infused oil. Not too, too much, just enough to make the onion and the garlic harmonize and Come translucent for us. All right, and I'll show you how we how I do the garlic. Let me move everything. I usually take off that little brown end, that little part right there. Take it off, and we toss that. All right, quick way to cut a garlic: smash it. Now, some people like to go bam, you know, and that's okay too. All right, and then we'll just start chopping it up, mincing it. Now, 
I also have another way that's even easier than both of the ways I've shown you. Uh, but that would be cheating. All right, but I'm going to share it with you anyways. You just use a garlic mincer. You can put your garlic right inside there, close it up, and your garlic comes out minced already. It's not really cheating. It's just convenience. This one happens to have a garlic slicer on the other side. So you actually can choose. You want it minced or you want it sliced. Isn't that just a neat little gadget? Yeah, that was a gift given to me. I think that it's just fabulous. And I do use it at times. But uh, here on the show, I think I'll show you, you know, What's, it, what's easy and comfortable at home? I want to be in your kitchen, so this is what we're going to do just in case you don't have that in your kitchen. All right, so I've sliced that, and our oil should be hot enough. We're going to scoop and slide. Oh, that sounds kind of like a dance, huh? Scoop and slide. <laughs> All righty, so we're going to let that go for a little bit. Now, I have half an onion here. And I'm just going to cut a little bit of that. And we're just going to slice that. It could be a rough chop, nothing major there. Yeah, I really want the flavor. So there we are. And we're going to toss that right in with the garlic so that, again, they could sing, they could harmonize. That's what I'm looking for. All right. You know, see, I love the smell of garlic and, of course, garlic and onions. It's just fabulous. So we've got that going. We're going to let the onions get a little translucent. Now, if you want, you could go right ahead and use the entire half of the onion. Um, that's just going to add more flavor. But I'm only going to use a little bit because I really want to... Um, have the every flavor uh, of every food to count for me. Uh, so we'll let that go for a little bit. And I think we are ready. So I'm going to add a couple of tomatoes. And not only that, the tomatoes are going to give this whole dish a beautiful, beautiful color. And we're just going to let those go around. Now remember I said two. Salt is an enhancer, so we want to enhance the flavor of what we're going to be cooking. Now, since I have garlic, I have onions, I'm going to have curry powder. We're really not going to need that much salt. And again, I use the kosher coarse salt because uh, it's very subtle. It doesn't, it's not overbearing and taking over the dish that I'm making. Um, and remember the seasoning I used earlier for the steak? That also had coarse kosher salt in it. So again, it's just enhancing the flavor. It's not taking over. So we're just going to sprinkle a little curry and get ready for that burst of um, aromas. And look, it changed the color just beautifully. Ah! I love it, love it, love it. And now I'm going to add my already washed baby spinach. And I'm going to add all of it because remember, spinach cooks down. And you talk about an excellent source of iron. This is just fabulous. You can eat it raw. You can eat it cooked this way, sauteed. You can eat it in a casserole or... Le cassoulet, as they say in French. Uh, and it'll be just fine. I'm just going to drizzle a little on top. And notice I didn't use the garlic because oil because we already have garlic in here. So don't you hear that sizzle? I do love being in the kitchen. I love being in your kitchen, and thank you. All right, so we're just going to turn this over. Remember, we got our steaks already down there, um, finishing off in the oven. We got our potatoes over here with the green chili peppers. 
All right, and we're just gonna make sure this all gets wilted. Look at that. They keep their beautiful, beautiful color. It's gonna turn really bright green. Oh, look at that. That is perfect. So I think we are ready for plating. Very good. I'm gonna take some of the curried spinach and tomato and we're gonna put it on our plate. Yum, it smells so good. It's a good thing that when we cook in here, we cook at the time of day, um, that it's convenient to eat this. And guess what? Even if it were 6 a.m. in the morning, I would actually be eating this. Oh, one of my tomatoes is trying to roll away from me. There we go. I'm going to clean that up because I like a clean plate. Remember, sometimes when you just see something and it looks so yummy, you just want to go ahead and partake of it. All right, let's get our spoon. Yum. All right. We're going to add that right here. Look at those colors, just alone, without the steak. But we can't forget the king of the party here, which is the steak. So we're going to get one of those, and we're going to put it right on top. Yay. All right. Oh, don't they look just delicious? Don't they look just delicious? I think, you know, I don't know which one to take. I should take all three. But let's go ahead and let's put one right there. Fabulous. Why one, you say? Because I'm going to have the ones later. All right. So we have that, and we're going to add our sauce to it. Let's see. Let's see. Let's move this and sit this here. And let's get some of the sauce. I think I'm going to use something else for the sauce. Here we are. All right. And remember what's in there. We have the shallots. We have the uh, cherries. And this is in a port sauce. Mmm. And it's just running all around the mashed potatoes. Help me. Yes, there we are. I'm going to add something else. This is just going to just bring everything together. I'm going to actually take some blue cheese. Yes, blue cheese. That's what I say, you know. You got to have some cheese on there. I mean, why not, right? All right, so there we are. So today we prepared our filet mignon steak uh, with a port sauce with cherries and shallots. We've also prepared a chipotle mashed potatoes, yum, with a curried spinach and tomato dish. And today I've paired this with a delicious red wine. I've chosen Cabernet Sauvignon, but you choose whatever works for you. Any red wine would do. Um, I want to thank Geisler's, our sponsor, for all of these fresh and delicious ingredients. I also want to say thank you for watching Simply Fresh Food and join me next time.